to fly this thing, we should show you how to land it. Once again, switch to the HUD by pressing F2. Now hit the backspace key to fire up the burners and get airborne. This first landing will be a direct Two. approach with a touch and go. Hit your 9 key to bring your engines to 90%. Level off around 7,000 foot AGL. Proceed to your first steer point. Okay, now your next steer point is your initial approach point. Hit the 8 key to decrease engine power to landing thrust. You want your airspeed at approximately 300 knots when you reach your initial approach point. To slow down, activate your air brakes by pressing down and holding the B key. Now you want to pitch your nose down about 10 degrees by putting the flight path marker on the minus 10 degree line on your pitch ladder. By the time you reach your initial approach point, your altitude should be approximately 5,000 foot AGL. Check this on the AGL indicator on the right center of your HUD. We're getting close. Now hit the G key to lower your landing gear. This will automatically extend your flaps. You will now notice the handling of the aircraft is a bit sluggish. When the F-22 comes into a landing configuration, it dampens the pitch and roll inputs to make the aircraft easier to handle at low speeds. We want your airspeed at or around 200 knots when you reach your final approach point. Use your air brakes if you have to slow down even further. When you get about six miles out from the runway, the instrument landing system will come up on your HUD. The ILS consists of the horizontal and vertical localizer bars and the angle of attack indicator. When your gear is down, the G-force indicator in the upper left-hand corner changes to the AOA indicator. The numbers on the left side of the bar represent a 14-degree angle of attack. The numbers on the right side are your current angle of attack. Now the hard part. You want the vertical localizer bar lined up on the runway. This is the bar running up and down. The horizontal localizer bar will move up as you get closer to the runway. The idea is to get the vertical and horizontal localizer bars crossing directly on top of your flight path mark. Now hit the number 7 key to reduce your engine power to 35%. Once your altitude is about 200 foot AGL, pitch your nose up Gear. to an angle of attack pull of 12 up. to 14 pull degrees. Up. You want to keep your nose flared up to make sure your rear wheels touch down first. Now this is what we call a touch and go exercise, so after you touch down, hit backspace to fire up your afterburners and get airborne again. Good luck to you.
Now the next landing will be a little bit harder. You're going to have to make a 90 degree turn to your final approach point. Now all of the same rules you learned on your first approach still apply. You'll just have to be coming out of a turn instead of being lined up with the runway from the beginning. Again, when you touch down, hit the backspace key to fire up your afterburners and get airborne. Remember, you want your altitude at about 5,000 foot AGL and your airspeed around 300 knots when you reach your initial approach point. Remember you want your altitude at about 2,000 foot AGL and your airspeed around 200 knots when you reach your final approach point. Your angle of attack should be between 12 and 14 degrees when you're ready to touch down. Try to get the vertical and horizontal localizer bars to cross over your flight path mark. Your last landing will have a steep approach angle. The runway is going to be at the bottom of the hill. Now it will be very hard to achieve the altitudes you've been taught at each steer point. However, the ILS rules still apply when you're getting closer to the runway.
Pull up, pull up. 